Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Ms. Phoebe Tati to recognize her decades of First Nations advocacy. Long before the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action in 2015, which include calling on the Government of Canada to acknowledge Indigenous language rights, Ms. Tati was an ardent champion of Dene languages and cultures and Indigenous language education. Ms. Tati is a member of the Sartu Gotene First Nation in the Great Bear Lake region of the Northwest Territories. She is a fluent speaker of the Sartu Delene language, and she holds a master's degree in Indigenous education from the University of Victoria. Her thesis, entitled The Wind Waits for No One, explored the foundational role that spirituality plays in the development of the Dene language. Throughout her career, Ms. Tati has generously shared her knowledge, her wisdom, and her experience, and has worked closely with Indigenous leaders, elders, language experts, and interprovincial education professionals to uphold and protect the rights of her people. Among her many roles, she was a monitoring agent of the Northwest Territories Official Languages Act, worked for more than two decades for the Territories Department of Education, and co-chaired the Aboriginal Language Task Force during the mid-1980s. Ms. Tati was also involved in the Satu People's Land Claim Settlement that enshrined the ongoing role of Dene and Métis people as stewards of the land and the community of Delaney's final government agreement that established a community-based Indigenous government. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Board of Governors and Senate, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Ms. Phoebe Tati so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. I would like to ask Dr. Tibi Fibi Tati to address the convocation. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Vice President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family, and friends. So, in a case, I told in a scene, good and must see you see it did dinner go over a jury data, did dinner it I'd like to thank the people, my people, the Satut in it, for it is them that are receiving this doctorate degree with all the work that they have done and all the gifts they have given us. Masi. My name is Phoebe Taddy. Our people were descending from the mountain to the Mackenzie River in Wooskin boats. It was spring, the water were rushing, the boats were fragile, and there were very few places where it was safe to land. A child was being born, so a smaller muskin boat was made for that woman in labor and attached to the bigger boat. When the boats landed, the elders asked, 
Where is the child that was born on water? The child was picked up from the smaller boats and carried to shore to be presented to the elders. The elders named him Tahti, which means brought ashore. My real name is Tahti, which comes from my great-great-grandfather. I am a member of the Satugot in a First Nation, one of the people of the Dene Nation in the Northwest Territories. Our traditional territory is Great Bear Lake, and it is the watershed including the upper Great Bear River and the barren lands to the east. Great Bear Lake is the eighth largest lake in the world, over 300 kilometers long. My home community Delana has a population of 600 people, and it is the only community on this huge body of water. Our traditional lands and waters are rich in non-renewable resources, fish, and wildlife. The Sahtugut in have relied on the resources since time immemorial, and we continue to rely on them today. It is a privilege for me to, to be here with you today to share your convocation. I am very humble, honored and very humbled to be granted an honorary doctorate of law degree from Concordia University. I want to thank everyone at Concordia University who was involved in the, in the review leading to my nomination. I have been involved in the Dene rights movement in the Northwest Territories for almost 50 years. A great deal of my work has been in the field of education, working to preserve and enhance our Dene lang languages and our culture. The only way for our ancestors to survive in our harsh environment was the awareness that they needed to work together and to support one another. Individuals brought their own gifts from the Creator to the community. Some were exceptional at harvesting and knew every inch of our traditional land. Others had special knowledge for medicine and how to maintain our camps, including making tents and clothing. We had prophets in touch with our spirituality. We had people, especially elders, who had held knowledge about our laws and culture and often passed it along by telling us stories. We had special people with gifts to entertain and to make people laugh. Humor is extremely important to people who need to work very hard under uncertain conditions to survive. I was recognized as having been given the gift to be knowledge holder, to gather and to hold knowledge and to help pass it on to the new generations. I feel that in being granted the honorary degree, I am receiving it on behalf of my community. I am honored to be convocating with a number of graduating Indigenous students, and I want to speak to you. Our language comes from our land. It gives us our identity. It shapes our values and our worldview. The Dene believe that the animals, the plants, and other entities on Earth are living beings. We believe that the Dene were the last to arrive on Earth, and the animals and the plants provide it for us so that we can live and survive. We believe that we must respect, protect, and maintain these li living entities for their and for our survival. Fire is a living being, and it provides for us. When we light the fire, it is grateful to us for its life, and in return, it bestows a gift on us. To show our respect for the important role it plays in our lives when we light it, we smudge ourselves with the first smoke. Great Bear Lake is, a, is rich in fish. 
If you find a little rock in its stomach, we believe that it's a gift from the fish with something good that will happen to you. We call that shuhta. I was lucky that I was born among people who were rich in those culture and language. I learned from that. There is a great movement in indigenous nations across Canada to learn their language. As a teacher, for me, that is half the battle. Children and people learn the language more easily when they are learning on the land because they are able to see, feel, and understand the connection between language and the land. I am pleased that our teachers in Delanet take our young people onto the land on a regular basis to enrich their language and learning experience. You need to become stewards of the land, appreciating the importance of our lands to maintaining our language and culture. In doing so, know that our traditional knowledge and perspective is just as important as the scientific knowledge of today. As one Dene elder and educator told me, to survive today, you need to be, learn to be strong like two people. Each of you have your gifts from the Creator. I am confident that each of you will be able to use your gifts to benefit of yourself, to the benefit of yourself, your family, and your people. By presenting me with this honorary degree, Concordia University is confirming that indigenous languages are integral to who indigenous people are. Our language and our identity comes directly from our traditional lands and are vitally important to the survival of indigenous people. I honor the university for this recognition. Uh, thank you very much to my family and to my people in Delane Masicho. Thank you very much. I want to thank you. I think your remarks touched everybody here today. You, I see it in your eyes as we have looked at each other a few times over the last two days. You've given us a gift and the gifts that you have received have been shared with us with great spirit and as a great teacher. Thank you. <laughs>